Hello, I'm Charles from Slow Club and you're listening to Six Towns Radio. Okay, so I'm here with Charles from Slow Club. How are you doing today? I'm good, thanks. How are you? I'm not too bad. Um, so my first question is, um, you're playing the Sugar Mill tonight. Have you played here before? We have, yeah. We've played in uh, 2008, I think, with the Noise X. Yeah, a while ago. Yeah. So is this, is this your second time playing here then? I think so. I've got a feeling that we played here again, but I can't remember who we were. Yeah. But, um, I've got some family in Stoke, so I've been before. Uh, did you enjoy playing here last time? There was people who come to the venues here perform. They always say they love performing in Stoke and love playing the Sugar Milk. Um, yeah, I can't, to be honest, I can't remember. It was such a long time ago. I don't really remember the gig that well. I should know that we've been here, but um, it's a nice room. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Um, am I right saying you start your tour in Oxford on the 5th of Feb? How's it gone so far, and has everything gone to plan? It's been good, yeah. It's been... Um, it's been really busy, like, we've, uh, we've got a new member in the band, so it's kind of been exciting, we've been uh, changing things up a little bit, and yeah, it's been good. And are you looking forward to playing in Sheffield? That's towards the end of the gig, and that's where you're from, so um, I take you've played there before, and are you looking forward to getting a nice homey reception? Yeah, yeah, well, it's sold out already, so we're kind of, it's nice knowing that the last night's sold out, and it's in Sheffield, so that's going to be a good laugh, I think we'll have a party that night, so, yeah. Um, to talk about the music videos for a second, now you've had some cameos on there. To mention, you've had Daniel Radcliffe and uh, Mackenzie Crook. What's the process of getting them involved into the music video, and how do you, how do you decide about who you want? Um, I guess they're both very kind of separate coincidences, really. Like mm-hmm. um, with Mackenzie Crook, um, Rebecca wrote him a letter, and um, uh, she had a friend who passed it on and he just liked the song and was into the idea so he just got involved and um, with Daniel Radcliffe we, we met him through a magazine thing that he was doing and he was just like a really lovely guy yeah. and just totally uh, up for doing something so we kind of roped him in and and he yeah he was really sweet kind of came back from LA and did it and it was really exciting actually to, to watch him kind of be like because you know like we, we, we went out to the shoot for like a couple of hours because it was a friend of ours who was directing the video and we were on tour at the time and we just like nipped into the place where they're filming it and it was kind of exciting to see someone who's such a I don't know such a, a big thing just kind of like mouthing all the words to our <laughs> song it's kind of weird but yeah it's good it's quite fun Did you manage to get a selfie with him? I don't. I, th- I don't remember getting a selfie. I think this was probably before the selfie was a yeah. was a thing. But um, yeah, we've got a photo with him. Yeah, yeah. Gonna, this yeah. has got a photo at least. Um, yeah, yeah. Is there anyone you'd love to get on your music video? I mean, you can be anyone at all. Anyone you can. I mean, no matter how unrealistic you might find, as long as they're still alive, obviously. I always uh, I had this idea about Jared Harris playing, doing like a two-minute version of the man, the old man in the sea, with Jared Harris. I thought that'd be really fun. I really like him. Uh, but yeah, I guess it, it just it just depends what what the song what suits the song and like kind of um, who's available. <laughs> well, um, as well as, as saying that you you know as well as all your cameos and you've, you've had some good ones, um, your music videos in general are, are really creative and they stand out from others nowadays. Because I mean, the more modern kind of music videos from other pop stars, like your mainstream ones, it's more just dancing around and just singing along to the song. Whereas yours are more creative. And do you think? When you started off making your videos, did you, was that always the goal to be a bit separate from everyone else, or it was just ideas that came along each time, which I just say fit the song? Yeah, I mean every every single one's different, really. I mean, I think when we first started, videos were more of a thing than they are now. Like, there there was MTV Two would play them at late at night, and now it feels very much like I think YouTube was kind of kicking off when we first started, but obviously now it's it's totally different, but. Um, yeah, videos are an interesting kind of format. Like I think um, they can be really fun and then they can be really stressful. And it's like it's. I think each one is its own thing, really. But it's been fun. I, I think I think on this record, like, like making the suffering new video was really good fun. Like we had a really wicked bunch of people there, and the camera was really wicked. And um, I think just the whole thing worked properly. I think that's the best one we've ever done. Definitely, mm-hmm. kind of. I remember the first time I saw that and I was just like, it didn't feel like us. It, I yeah. felt like, yeah, I felt like I was watching something else. It was quite nice. It was just like, um, I felt like, because we weren't involved in the f- the kind of, I think a lot, on a lot of them we've kind of been like, you know, like 
in on it uh, all the way. I mean, I, Rebecca like directed that video, but I was kind of totally like, I didn't see anything until it was done, and then when it was done, it was really, I was just like, that looks great. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so for the latest album, um, you, I think you, your latest single is "Suffering You, Suffering Me." Um, do you feel this is your favourite album to date? And um, if it is, what's your, what's your favourite song off the album that you've made? Um, I guess it's hard to say favourite really because mm -hmm. it's just it's just a kind of continuation of us as people. Like, I guess there are there are parts of records that I really love and um, and that will always be like super special, you know, like off all of the albums so um, I don't know if it's about favourite for me it's more kind of I, I come and go like there are times when I really like certain things and there are certain times when I really like other things and um, I think we've been lucky to be able to kind of like f move freely creatively speaking and just do what we want because we've not had this kind of like glare at us that a lot of bands have and they kind of feel the need to kind of um, satisfy that so I think we've been really lucky that we don't have that because we've been just free to do it whatever yeah. we want you know this is something that always, always interests me I've never had the chance to ask before how does how does the decision making process come about picking the next single uh, I guess that's more from the label really yeah. that's a kind of strategy thing um, but I mean in the past like Stephen from Moshi Moshi he's kind of taken the lead on that like he's pretty good at um, figuring out a plan. I mean, he's still heavily, he still do, he does kind of, he's our manager as well, so kind of, he kind of deals with the label on that side of things and trying to figure out which is the best way to go. And um, I guess, I know, it's a funny thing really, because it's like once you, once you start down a certain route, it's just, that's just how it is. And um, I guess if people are into your band or they like what they hear, it's like it's like with track listings on albums. Like I'm terrible at deciding what the best way of going is with it because in my head it's like once you listen to all the songs, you decide which ones you like and which ones you don't anyway. I mean, when I listen to a record, I'll often just skip to the songs I like. If I, if I, I mean, obviously, if I'm not into the whole thing as a piece of work, but like if there are songs that really like speak to me, I'll just I won't just be like oh, probably just having a, an iPad and uh, just yeah. skipping and stuff, but. Um, yeah, I don't know. I guess once you're presented with something, it, that's just what, how it is, isn't it? Mm -hmm. What stands out. Yeah. So, final question is, do you have any set out goals and any plans or anything you hope to achieve um, in 2015? Um, I guess it'd be really nice to play some festivals, um, play some, yeah, play some festival slots and... Um, I guess this is kind of this is kind of the the last UK tour on this record, so um, just carry on writing and you know making records. Yeah, yeah, totally. Like I feel like we've been really lucky that we've just kind of kept rolling and kind of hopefully just keep that that thing moving. Well, thank you very much, Charles. Thank you, having us. Thank you.